Welcome back to Copperhead Customs. Today, we're continuing with this, our 1952 six inch roof chopped Bedford. And if you want, you want to see what we do on this one, you better stick around, because it's going to be really, really good. So yes, if you're new to the channel, this is our 1952 budget built, and that's right, a huge, huge, huge budget of $2,000 Australian. We are going to attempt to get this, that's right, this 1952 Bedford that pulled out of a paddock in the middle of Australia that had been sitting there for who knows how long, but it had no wheels, no nothing, it had been shot, it's full of bullet holes, and we are going to attempt to have this running, driving safely down the road for $2,000 Australian. What the? Exactly what the? How are you going to pull that off? Well, we're going to try anyway. So we've, in one episode, given this a six-inch roof haircut, and we haven't quite finished. So in this episode, we'll quickly finish that out, then... That's right, then we get to go on a road trip, and on that road trip, we're going to buy ourselves a new chassis, motor, and transmission that we're going to cut down and shorten and turn into a little baby chassis. Yes, we are, and we also want to do some work on the inside of this, the flooring. I think we want to pull this off of this chassis and sit it on the ground. With all of that said, sit back and enjoy what we are about to attempt to achieve and as usual we'll probably do some other things and add some more drama into the video but first port of call i think we may jump in the car and go and get this other chassis okay well it is very very early in the morning it is what is it it is quarter to six and the sun's out it's been out for about three hours so anyways, we are leaving. We're heading to Toowoomba, which is about three hours. So let's see what we go and get.
Oh, Kali Dokali, we are back. It's been a few days. Uh, we actually had, in Australia, it doesn't happen, but we had a tornado rip through here. We were okay. We had no power. Devastation everywhere through the place, from here down to the Gold Coast. And I've never known of a tornado in Australia in my entire life, as far as I know. We get hurricanes, and this was a full-fledged tornado like you have in America. So, hey, what's going on with the weather? Anyway, enough of being the weather, man. So it is now... New Year's Eve, I think, today. So we picked this up the day before Christmas. But here it is. So this is what we've got. We've got a... This is a 1980. It's called a WB. This was a panel van chassis. They're all pretty much the same. The utes and the panel vans. And they're the same, basically, from HQ, which is what our other Bedford is sitting on. A HQ one tonner chassis. And, but it's basically the same as what this is. Now, this one, though, has disc brake front end. And the disc brake front end alone, the disc brake set up the spindles calipers this all that is worth basically what i paid for this car uh, we've got the motor now this motor is a blue motor it's a 202 cubic inch holden blue motor they did a holden red motor which is in our bedford they did that for a, a lot of years the 202 cubic inch red motor then they did the blue motor and then and this one has a bit of extra pollution gear and stuff on it and they did a black motor as well a 202 cubic inch and apparently i think the red motor is the best of the three i'm not 100 percent what the difference is is they're basically the same i know these had a lot more pollution stuff on them this one was on liquid petroleum gas lpg as well so we're probably going to have to replace the carby but the motor is a runner the gearbox is supposedly a four speed gearbox so the gearbox is probably worth more than what we paid for it if we were to separate it now we've got a fuel tank thrown in it's like a hundred hundred and fifty dollar item we've got a tow bar thrown in probably get 50 bucks for that if we want and we've got the tail shaft thrown in over there which i paid 50 bucks for the last one we also got a steering column so whether we use that column we don't know but we've got the tail shaft there to cut down now this does have a little bit of rust in the front here on both sides but if you remember what i've been saying is i want to shorten this approximately two foot so on our other bed fed what we did is this is a cab bed mount location brace and we actually welded another brace in through here to pick up the rear cab mount okay i'll show you on the cab in a second what my plan is is to cut the two foot out or whatever it is and maybe use this existing cab mount brought forward to use on the cab mount for this so i'll show you over here quickly of what i am getting at so we made a bracket on the other chassis that came along here and picked up that cab mount there so what i am going to attempt to see if it will work is if we could use that there to pick up that cab mount by if we shorten the chassis the correct amount that there will probably sit underneath so the cab would come in here like that so we'll see how we go with the heights we may have to actually shave a bit of the top off and box it in or something but i thought that would be a pretty trick idea now originally i was going to cut out of this section but if i actually do my cut out of this section where the rust is we eliminate the rust all we'd have to do is weld new brackets for our transmission or gearbox cross member they would have to be welded back here somewhere so i think that's our plan of attack on the chassis so it also come with lowering blocks installed the rear end's basically been gone through so we paid six hundred dollars for this whole setup and we paid fifty dollars extra for the four hubcaps which are generally around two hundred dollars for those hubcaps so we've got an absolute bargain so we're six hundred and fifty dollars into this but we have potential to sell some items if we see fit so we have been busily grinding for about four hours i think and we've got our roof pretty much all welded and grinded up there's still a little bit more to do here the other window frame is done I've still got to just do quickly do this window frame and this bit of bracing in here and this window frame I've got to do. The other side, all the back's done, ground down. The other window frame is 90% done. Uh, we've got a little piece in there to put in and I think there's one little piece up in there to put in. Now, as you can see, it is ripply and dented and all very ugly. But hey, this is how we want it we want it to match so if you look at the existing part of the roof like look look at the roof itself it is horrid so there's no point making this look a million dollars um so this is rough as well um and it's actually quite hard to get it to look rough like this it actually takes a bit of knack like we've actually gone come in and been belting it with the hammer and as you can see hammer marks here this section is pretty much ready for our next step
we are 99.9% .9 done. We have a little tiny square piece, rectangle piece, just there. Is the light going to adjust? Probably not. And we've got our little drip rail at the top here to put in. And we've got that little piece just there to do. That's the same on the other door. And I think there's a couple of little welds on the inside of the frame to do, about a minute. I think that's the roof chop finished bar. We just got to grind up these little door frames. So maybe half hour to an hour in the morning, we'll have the roof chop done. You can see at the top there, it's all ground down. As you can see how banged up we've left it, rippled. Remember we've got bullet holes and all of that in this. We want it really, really roachy. It is New Year's Eve and I'm gonna go inside and watch some racing. Oakley Doakley, hey, heat wave, tornadoes, now we're flooding. <laughs> it's all happening here. Anyways, that's the roof chops done. It's all done. You can see we've got our nice hidden on the body line there. The roof's all done like you've sewn. Drip rail, window frame, everything done. In here, you can see the window, all the inner pieces through there, all beautiful. So fully done there may be a couple of pieces I'll, on the inside I'll neaten up with the grinder when I can see a bit better when I get some more light in there but now the plan is spray some water with the scotch bright and we'll go through and we'll sand up the cab first if you can see that side there that's not wet that's just I've sanded that with the scotch bright and as you can see it brings a lot more of the greens back through as you can see in the top now this little section here I've done as well just there and as you can see it brings lots more of the green back through so we're going to go through with the water in the scotch bright and we'll scuff it all back get rid of all the dirt and the scudge basically off of it and the surface the rust that's just sitting on the top on top of the green paint yes that's right you probably don't realize but underneath not all of this some of this is actual metal but some of this rust is on top of the green paint so we'll go do that and then we will go around and blend all our welds like we have on that one there which as you can see I know it's dark but it blends in it's blended in beautifully hasn't it so uh, I'll show you that technique in a minute let's get sanding Okay, hopefully we are working and you can see what we have done. So we've gone along and scuffed the whole car with a scotch wire and as you can see all the extra green, I know it's very bad lighting but you should be able to tell all the extra green we are pulling back up. You can see through here, like we even got the 57C showing that was un not even visible before. On the back, like we have brought so much colour back out of this. This thing has obviously been a fair few colours in its day. We've got some red, we've got white, we've got two or three different greens in it. More white down here, red, it's very good. Uh, in here, this is a perfect example, is it looked like that over there. And as you can see now, it has lifted a heap of colour. We just stealthed it through the rain to the other side because we haven't put our gutter up yet. So this is the other side as well it has looked so much better and this is just its very first scotchy now we have to do inside the doors as you can see through there we have to do all inside the doors we've got to do the dash the tunnel the door frames all of that is yet to be done but we can do that a bit later our next step will be to do our patina blend yes that's right our next step will be to paint all our weld mark now what we will do here is we will hit this with a hammer tone brown that I have it's a copper colored hammer tone brown we'll put our first little bit on that then we will 
spray some water and we've got two other browns we've got an indian red which is like a reddish brown and basically a mission brown that we will just put some random bits on just to get that brown as our bit of rust then what we'll do is we'll continue the water technique now if you haven't seen the water technique you will we'll continue the water technique with our three different color greens and then we will probably come back in over the top in a few areas with a little bit of the water technique with a bit of brown so what that will do is that will put spots of all of the colors intermixed so we'll do that through all these areas and in this cab we hopefully will get it to look like the other side does and be blended in and fingers crossed you won't even tell we've done it now i'll show you what we did on our chevy so for the guys that are new to us and haven't seen on our chevy this is our 38 chev we're building and this is the original patina on the cab as well this is fake original fake so what we did on this one though is we did not blend any of our chop welds you can see through the back here you can see them all we just let them rust that was what the technique we used on this one was uh, but on this one we are going to attempt to blend them all away all right we are back now let's attempt to do this patina painting first step we're going to throw hammered paint and primer in one we're going to throw a little bit of that down apologize for the lighting we are in total darkness we've got another blackout so let's squirt a bit of this around just on the actual bare metal section itself Right, so there's our first bit down. We'll let that set up. What I'll quickly do now is I'll quickly just run around and do the other bits and put that down everywhere else. Okay, now the plan is we'll start using some water and we'll start just putting a couple of the other browns on just to give it some different textures. Then we'll put some greens on in random spots and probably a bit more of the brown. As we use the water, you'll see what I do and we'll see if we can sort of hide this back section. The first step is we'll just hit it with some water. So what this does is the paint will not stick where the water droplets are, so it will give us a textured look, a speckledy. Now we just missed a bit of this in some random spots. Maybe a bit around here. And then we hit it with the water straight away. And as you can see, it just leaves a little remnant of a bit of that colour in there. Well then we'll blend a little bit of it into our existing rust. So we get a bit of that colour into our existing. Now this this is the Indian, which is pretty good for some of our darker colours. A pretty good rust colour, the Indian. Now we've got a bit of mission, we'll just throw a little bit of that around randomly. This is a very dark one. And as you can see, a lot of this gets taken off, depending on how long you let it set for. If you leave it there for a little bit longer, more of it will stay. If you hit it instantaneously, like you've made a mistake, you can pretty much remove it. So as you can see, we're 
getting some different colours and textures in that brown section now. Should let that one go a bit longer. So you just leave it there for a few seconds, then hit it with the water, and you can see just some little dark speckles in there. Bit around the corner here. And just so it's not a complete line, and I actually think we'll go a bit down in some random areas, maybe a bit up there. To get a bit of rust on that existing paint. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with the brown. Uh, I'll quickly just go refill my bottle. Okay, now as you've seen, none of these paints are actually colour matched or anything. They're just random colours from the shop, the cheap shop. Well, now I've got this uh, this light one. This is a lime green. Now, we don't use a lot of this one because this one is a bit of a, a bit too yellowy bright. But there is a couple of resemblances of this colour. In there so if we can just get a little bit of this texture in in the odd spot I don't think it will hurt it what I find is if you do a some random bits like that you can get a bit better effect like I said we don't want a lot of this color but we just want some resemblances of a bit of a green All right, I think we'll come in with the next colour. Like I said, we don't want any, hardly any of that one because it is a little bit off. Now, these two colours are very close. So this is a uh, emerald green that I'm putting now. So it's actually looking half okay. We'll just get a bit of a green spudge in there. As you can see, this one is a bit bright as well. can see through this section here we're really starting to look very similar to this as you see this is original this is our bit of fake it's really starting to blend in pretty good And if you get it wrong, it doesn't really matter. Sand it off and go again. But I think we're pretty, this is actually coming along pretty good, I think. Now, let's just have a little check. We'll just give it a rinse off and check what we think. It's actually looking very, very good. Now, we'll throw a little bit of this color. This color was pretty similar, I think. This is more like this, from memory. See, it's a bit more of like a khaki green. This is actually called Brunswick. I 
And by just taking them up, it shows a little bit of that colour. Even if it's just the ever so, we wash a lot of it off. It just shows a bit of that colour up into the other sections. And really makes them blend in nicely enough. I think we're getting close to this disappearing a little bit. I like a bit of that black there showing. We'll try to bring a bit of that back out. That looks pretty good. We'll do some of these random little just to bring a bit of this colour up into that section. Do the same going down. That is looking pretty good, I think, on the greens. Now, what we'll do, I think we'll miss a little tiny bit of this brown back over proceedings. And we will be very close. So you can see here, we we'll try to get a little bit of brown in there. So now we've got a brown spot over the top of our green spot. So this is one of the keys I believe is now throwing some brown back in over the top which gives us a multi-layered effect And I reckon that is pretty damn close. I reckon that's us guys. So, we'll just let that dry off now. And I don't know what that's looking like on the camera. Okay, so I've just moved yours and hopefully you get a better angle and a better light from there. You should be able to tell that that is basically blended away now we'll have to let this water dry i don't really want to touch it now because it's pretty good we'll let that water we'll let that paint set up a bit more then we'll actually probably wipe it down and we'll get a really good look of how good it has actually turned out but from here it is it, it actually looks pretty pretty good you would hardly tell that it is fake now if you can see in close into this section you'll see there is multiple, multiple textures, which is what we have in these areas. It's not just solid browns, greens, it's multi-layered, and that's what we're getting through here. We're getting green dots and brown dots, and brown slabs with green dots, and green slabs with brown dots, and so on and so forth. And so it's really, really looking real. So if you were to get your colors matched, you could completely hide this using this technique now our colors aren't matched and we're still making it blend away very well so what i'll do now is i'll continue on with the rest we'll come back later on and see how well i do
So we bit the bullet and went and bought a heap of LED rechargeable lighting so we can see around the place a bit better. So hopefully now you actually start to see how good our blends actually look. Now this one here we've actually hit with the Scotch Bright just to dull it down again. If I put that there. Okay, now the roof and that we haven't done that yet. But as you can see, there's still bits of the bare metal that will come through. So I actually think this looks it's blended in very, 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 very well. And I think it looks, and as you can see our textures, all our different textures up in there. There's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of different texture up real close. Zoomed right in there, guys. You can see. So when we stand back here, which is, you know, a two foot, a foot off. It actually looks really, really cool. And there will be some rust pop through. Come around the other side quickly. Have a look at over here. This side's pretty good lighting. Okay, you'll have to agree it is looking pretty good. Okay, so we just quickly did our little rust repair down the bottom there. Did that off camera. As you can see, the patina is quite rough. I just basically went psh, 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 with the cans, and I didn't even because I didn't even grind it down perfectly. That will never ever be seen. The only people that will know that is done is me and you. So if you don't tell anyone, I won't. But I'd had a gutful of welding and grinding. So our next thing, I don't know if you've realised, but we had pulled the front end off over there. We unbolted our front guards and our nose cone. Now I'm pretty sure this one is different and I don't think, well, we'll have a look, but I don't think they will work. So I think we'll just stick with our beat up one. As you can see, just them getting wet, it's brought a bit of black. So, so we've started to, so we've pulled them off, get back, we've taken the steering column out. Now this thing fought me, so if anyone knows, but uh, I couldn't get it out of the box. At this stage, so we have to keep stuffing around with that later. Now I have actually sold the chassis and the motor, so yoo-hoo, there's some money back into our kitty for our two grand build. I think we'd like to keep the horn, I think that's a nice piece. I'm going to ask the people we sold it if they want that piece, if not I'll keep that. I'm taking the pedals off, the running boards have got to come off, the handbrake assembly, I think the battery tray. Uh, and that's it. So we've got to tidy all of this up in here. We are all unbolted. The cab is all unbolted. We basically just have to take the handbrake assembly off and the gear lever and we're ready to jack this up. Tomorrow we'll tidy this, do what I said. We'll drag that chassis and we'll stick it over here. You can see we've moved the car, ready for it. So we've got a pump a tire up on that. We'll put that over there. We'll bring the trailer in. We'll lift our cab up and we will drag our motor and chassis out and take our last few pieces off and push I suppose we'll push the chassis back or we'll at least just sit this on the ground and go over the next step uh, okay we've got the chassis away from the body and the chassis dragged up onto the trailer. We've taken our little drive axle off. We've obviously moved this chassis out the way. So we're basically, it's not tied down. We're basically at the point where we're ready to move this uh, forward. We'll hook up this chassis to the back of the trailer and pull this chassis up a bit so that we can then push that chassis back in. And we've got the cab in here hanging in the air and as you can see all beautiful
Okay, so there it is sitting on there now. It's trimmed at the front. It's basically sitting where we want it, front to back wise. It's all trimmed at the front. We just have to trim a little bit off of this. Now, this will be sitting back behind here. So work that out in a second, which will then get the cab level on the chassis. And that's basically where it has to be. So we're just basically getting this sitting where we want it. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll work this all out as in our distance from our center of our rear cab mount to the center of that and we'll work out our height discrepancy. It's very, very close, but I think we may have to just cut that across like that or something and replate the top with a hole in it. But I think this will work as our rear cab mount, which is awesome once we shorten it. And basically that uh, from here to here is the distance approximately that we are going to shorten the cab. So, plenty good, hey? Should look pretty cool, I think. So that will put our wheel basically about here. So that should look pretty trick, I think. So nice short stubby. All right, there we go. We've got the back trimmed, uh, just a couple of little trims and it is now sitting nice and level to the chassis. So this is pretty much where it will sit within a couple of mil, you know, a sixteenth of an inch or something, where you may be out back or forward. But what we will do before we finalize anything is we will get our front end mounted. To do so, we're gonna to have to trim all the inner guards, both sides, and trim the chassis ends as well. So, We'll have to do some measuring for that. We'll then bolt our guards on to make sure that our wheel is perfectly centered. And at that stage, we'll look at our brackets to mount the rad support that will go on the chassis ends. We'll also probably look at our cab mounts, getting them made and probably tacked on the front ones as well. And at that point, the cab can basically come back off because it's trimmed, we know it fits. We'll have our measurement done back here. The cab can come off. We can look at shortening the chassis and then getting the chassis prepped, getting all that stuff done, welded out. The cab mounts all welded out. The, sh the chassis sh shortened, welded out. We can look at getting all the gunk off the front end and probably start to throw a bit of paint around. We want to paint the motor as well. I've got some out there ideas with this build. So you might want to stick around with it because I have some very, very very out there ideas of what I'm going to do that I've never seen anyone really do with some of this stuff. So that is the plan. I think we've had some success in this. We've finished our chop. As you can see, we've got the strap in the way, but it is very banged up. But the patina blend has turned out a treat. You'll have to agree with that, that that patina blend is pretty good. And standing here, I'll try to get out of there. But uh, hey, you can't, you can't knock that like, if, if you if you stood here, you'd you wouldn't even know this thing's been chopped. Do you know what I mean? Like so, that is the goal I think with this one. So anyway, this is going to be a pretty aggressive looking little little truck. This one, like our other Bedford, is a very aggressive looking hot rod, and it is not even roof chopped. So this one will look cool. Now it probably doesn't quite look very aggressive yet, but by the time we get that front lowered, get some stagger in it, some stance, the front on, it will look. A million dollars. This was a bit of a weird video this one guys. I apologize for that. It's been over a few weeks It's sort of been doing my head in a bit doing this video uh, with the it taking so long and uh, the weather and rain and blackouts and bad lighting and All of these things. I haven't really had a plan of, of this video of what I'm doing and I'm bits are recorded bits aren't so I apologize for that and hopefully we'll get back into the swing of things in the next one. So, thanks for watching, and like always, I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.